think if you want pregnant it's composition. It's almost like you sort of squint at it and mm -hmm. blur it a little because you're not trying to outline it. You're just trying to get the mm -hmm. loose shape of it. And if you're thinking about doing a whole composition, you try to either do it in a C shape for the um, main elements or an S shape. So I'm going to be doing this flower here, probably this one down here, and then buds to kind of go around and then add leaves wherever you You're going to hear us saying that a lot, S curves, C curves, basically that's what everything's made up of. And I'm a huge mixer, color mixer. I like to just add in color and see what it does. So I'm going to start off a little bit dark here in the center. Do you tend to start with the darker colors? Not I go necessarily. Back and forth. Okay. This just sort of grounds me. I, I Starting with darker in the center helps ground you. I need a place to start. And this this is also this, but it's not gonna look anything like it. It's so. basically <laughs> where all the all the life of the flowers coming from. I think that they, they call it ovum or ovary or something, which is the where where everything comes from. So then I still have some of that pink on my brush, and I'm just going to see what happens here. You always leave white. Yeah, I'm, I noticed that. That gives you your highlights. So she's basically making a bunch of C-curves, mm -hmm. which is feels so good. And then, so you see how the darks are in the bottom of those petals for the shadows, you just add in little dots of color, mix it up, put a little pink over here, a little pink here. That really doesn't look like anything yet. A little bit darker. And one one good way to loosen up is if you, I, tr I gave this table cushions because people were sitting kind of low. If you're able to move this way. No risk. Elbow. Yeah, yeah. She's using her wrist for the tight inside stuff, but that's a good practice. I notice with watercolor as opposed to oils, you're supposed with oil and acrylic, you're supposed to stand farther apart, farther yeah. away from it. You can't really do that. No, it. no. It's all. And with oils, you tend to work with it up, mm -hmm. propped up. Well, this would this is a, would be a runny. If you want a really <laughs> runny, <laughs> which is a technique, lead, yeah. yeah. Had you ever worked with watercolor before? Before I, you went gouache. Gouache. My background I know. was textile design, but, which is basically you can mix gouache with watercolor, but it makes it choppy. Uh, I picked up watercolor kind of during COVID. I just was excited okay. to play around with the bleeds, and so it kind of it came naturally because you know you know me I'm so loose. But my whole goal for going on this trip was to learn how to paint a flower that does exist. Because Karen, you know me for the stuff on the left. Yeah, that's familiar, Jenny. Yeah. Yep. All right, so we I'm go gonna, way back. I'm gonna leave this alone right now. Nice. Let that dry, um, and then go back later when it's dry to add some more of these really dark areas. And that is the hardest thing for me: being patient. But what it, about you guys? Yeah. I have yeah. cannot tell you how many times I've prematurely made a bleed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you want bleeds, like right now. I have to put this in. Let's very make quickly. a big explosion. Yeah. I have to put it in very quickly because I want that bleed there. And then you just let that oh. go. You don't touch it again. Um, I want to. That That's how you end up making a mess when you go back in. Exactly. Or you make a bleed too soon when everything's too wet. Is that? I true? do that all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but I, if I, you do that, go with it. Yeah. And I wanted to get this little thing in here, but I don't want the whole thing to bleed into that petal. So I let the white in the center and just bleed on the edges. Add a little bit of dark green over here. Is that why you leave you leave the whites because they will bleed into each other? Um, the white is your barrier. The, the yeah. white is your tape. It's your yeah. tape, and it's yeah. also your highlight. Right, yeah. And like I said, I like to just keep adding colors. And I'm just making this up See, right she's now. moving her arm. So for the, this, this brush is amazing. You start off small, let it bloom out. So and press and release. Again. I mean, that's perfect, and you don't want to touch that. Press and release. Sometimes it doesn't give you the exact shape. Sometimes you don't want that wetness over here, so you bring it back to there. And it's kind of like sculpting with water. Yeah. I like to add just little dots of color. It's just so fun. 
and you just let it go. Maybe we'll have Beautiful. A, hmm. Maybe we'll have a little dark guy down here. It's so nice how you leave the white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's okay. I'm going to touch this here, and that makes it really neat. So she's making two C curves. Oh, the, the left side was a, oh no, the right side was an S curve. Well, maybe I'll just add a little bit of darkness on the ends as well. Okay, so now I'll try to go with this guy. Closer, it's more like a three quarter view. So the first one was a side view. So basically, there's no rules. You're making it interesting. Um, just and a cool lot of it is instinct. The cool thing is, all right, all the all the masters copied before while they were learning to paint. You can totally co copy what she has, but I guarantee you, everybody's painting is right. going to be different, mm -hmm. no matter what. Yeah. So, but feel free to you know photograph it and have it open next to you. Try to crop. So I love the way that looked, and I mean, you saw how quickly that. What happened. did you add in the dark, the ochre? Just this uh, 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 umber? Umber. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so I don't want to mess too much with this because I love it so much. So I'm going to make sure that I leave white where I don't want it to bleed. <laughs> and I love the way these oh, little tendrils, little, yeah, beautiful. get the texture on the edges of that. She makes it look so easy. She does. <laughs> I'm much more heavy handed, you'll see. <laughs> and then I gotta have my paint here that I love. Just bleed a little bit in there. So you're starting off in the dark areas. You wet your brush. That's the aggressive the butterfly. I don't, it doesn't bother me now that I know what it yeah. is. It's, <laughs> it's okay. You don't want to lay eggs, so. Oh, <laughs> It's okay. I don't want to. Oh, yeah. it likes you. I don't want to scare it away. <laughs> Let the bleeds happen. It likes it. It likes it. It's like it really likes you. It's so neat. I'm a flower. It's like your shampoo. Maybe. And when I was first starting with watercolor, I did a lot of experimenting on scratch papers just to figure out how, how much water, how, how long do I have to wait before it bleeds. Um, so feel free to use your, use your paper as a test sheet. This is so fun, guys. Meditative. No, I, you know what? She's used to I'm it. good. Surprisingly. <laughs> you're not nervous when you know what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got nervous last week, and then I just kept practicing. And then now I'm like, okay, I can do this. It's a little hard because you're all locked in your right brain when you're painting. Sometimes I don't even hear the song, right? Talking about what you're doing while you're doing it is a little tricky. I, you're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. And it's also, she's moving her hand and using the brush, holding, she's holding side angles, both directions. You can turn your paper around. You don't have to do yoga of the hand like she's doing. <laughs> Those little dabs of color in there. Now you do, on the edges. you do a lot of landscape watercolors, right? I'm and starting to. Oh, yes. okay. Yes. And you do like the gouache, which was tighter and big blobs of color. So yeah, it must not have as been an adjustment. Bleed. Yeah. For yeah. both of you. Yes. There were times way. that I used gouache. I really did a lot of dry brush and I did some sort of watercolory technique, but for textile design at the time, now you can do photographic stuff like that would be fine. But when I was doing it back in the dinosaur days, uh, they would screens. engrave screens. Mm -hmm. They would engrave one screen for each color. So mm -hmm. if you had a dirty palette and you one of your greens was dirty, that's an extra screen. So, th which is why I still make my color chips the way I do. Mm -hmm. Just kind of keep reevaluating. So 
I didn't do the, these petals exactly like it shows here, but they're indicated. And mm -hmm. I like it. So I'm leaving it. <laughs> and before that dries, what do I need to do? Get my greens in here. Something to bleed. And I keep dipping for different colors. Because that's just going to make it all the more interesting. And this does not appear in nature, just like Jenny's flowers. I'm just, <laughs> I'm making a design at this point. And that's fun, the, the way she's pushing and pulling pressure. That's the beauty of these big round brushes. She's got tiny little lines and big fat. And I'm ah, more, naughty, naughty. I'm more of um, colors found in nature as opposed to what Jenny does. She likes her bright, every, bright every colors. Every color box. Right. So I like to be a little more natural and I rarely touch this. So I don't, <laughs> when you said that, I'm like, oh yeah, sure, pr should probably do, be doing that, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I like the dirty stuff. That's because that's the way nature it. is, right? So everyone's different. Everybody's mm -hmm. different. There's not going to be any two of you doing the same thing. So if you wanted to take the warm, right now you've got a really, really warm, warm peonies. If you wanted mm -hmm. to. I know you're still waiting for the top one to dry. Right. And I like adding a little bit of yeah, that's the, nice browns in there mm -hmm. just to instant make depth. it instant. Yeah, just really makes it more interesting. Okay, so now that that's pretty dry, I need to go in and add some depth to make it look like that flower goes mm. really, like it's a real flower and goes in there. So this, Alizarin Crimson. And if anybody wants a squirt of Alizarin Crimson, where did I put it? I think it's on that table. Try not to touch your other arm. That's what I'm Right, thinking. that's going to be the hard thing to smash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you're going over even the white areas to just kind of. Karen, are you a lefty? Do what you right. need to do. I was thinking about that lefty. I just remembered that. So how many how many lefties are there here? Who on our table? Who on our floor? Four. That's pretty. Yeah. yeah. So there's the smudge effect with the with the left hand because it tends to go this way. I usually I wear a little white Michael Jackson glove, hmm. and it it does smudge, but not as badly. You can also um, put something down. Like uh, remember Jeff? He he would he made this little I don't know what it was out of this little wood almost tiny, tiny bench that he rested on so that you keep mm. him from mm. going across. Because if you try to go from above, you can see the other thing that it, this, and that's mm -hmm. still The other thing is do this. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. move mm -hmm. your paper around. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Which yeah. is yeah. totally legal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what's really fun is to just almost take a straight purple in the really dark areas and just dab a few things in there. Like and it just became 3D. You'll be shocked when you see how that dries. It sometimes it actually lightens. Now, different. if they don't have purple in their palette, could they use their oh. Prussian blue? Mm -hmm. um, you can make a purple. Yeah, you can make. You a can make a purple. Uh, you can make purple. Prussian blue. Is it hard to make a purple? I find it. Yeah. Nice. It's interesting. It's not going to be perfect, but. Do you ever paint blue hydrangeas? I have, oh yes. boy! Oh boy! Ask her if so she's painted good. hydrangeas. Mm -hmm. She just did a giant project for TJX. Oh, nice. Yeah, look at that purple. Oh, that's a, that's better than right out of the tube. It so is, tell yeah. what you used. So this was my Prussian blue and upper red, upper rose. Okay. We have those. I expect everybody to try purple. Right. Mm -hmm. It's also fun. Um, I would like mm -hmm. to add a little bit of dimension there. So I'm going to just take a little dirty yellow. Touch oh, it on the beautiful. edges. Oh. And then I don't like the way that is harsh, so I'm just going to take kind of a wet brush and blend it down. Okay, you both come from surface design. Mm -hmm. um, sort of, yeah. We worked, we worked together um, at Summer Infant. Oh, yeah. Lots of infant bedding. Lots and lots of infant bedding. Mm -hmm. So, what's the idea? If you mix this with this, 
Um, yes. TJ very, very good point. Stuff. Yeah, and it, and this with this should get you this. Mm. Yeah. But there are some colors that are more fugitive than others. If you get a color that's called a hue, tell me if you've experienced this and you you try to mix. That means it's already been mixed before it's in the tube. Right. It's not as pure. It's not I as try pure. not to buy them. Yet. I try not to buy hues mm. at all. Um, they're less expensive, but they're, they may—they're less expensive, but they may get a fugitive effect, where it'll it won't bleed nicely and it'll get granular. So um, that's why we got less pigment too. Less yeah. pigment. Yeah. Less pigment, exactly. Yeah. The what do they mix it with? Um, not turpentine. The stuff that they mix paint with, they use more of it. Thank you. I think that's what it is. Yeah. What is it? And you can buy. You can buy. Some people really like to use the, kind of same the little dried squares oh, of paint, and you totally can. You can totally use these, but and you can buy them like this. I just happen to love to be able to control what I'm putting in my palette, and I don't know. I haven't done the math to find out what's cheaper, but this is a great thing to travel with. Mm. So I will have links to these little guys. Sometimes I just dip into my already, you know, mixed in areas of my palette and just dab in different colors, just for fun, see what happens. Karen, you thought your traffic was bad? Leslie's came in from Boston. Their traffic was so slow, she was painting watercolor in the backseat of the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave myself the hour and a half. I had to do was that last night? No more. Since so yesterday. We left about oh, breaker, one o'clock and oh, took gosh. about two and a half yeah. hours. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I know, I know. We live in South Boston. Okay, we always travel when there's no traffic. Yeah, yeah. 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 there's a typical yeah. for a Saturday. Yeah. It, it used to be if you yeah. you left Boston by two, you yeah. yeah. were safe. Yeah. Oh, I love that That's dark one, Leslie, that bud. Thank you. Got to go at night. So practice your leaves also. Try to do what I did there and just start off. I like where you're putting in the. And if you get that and you like it, leave it. Sort of yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. I know right. that is pretty. Not to make a mess yeah. 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 Right. So just right. add weird colors that are messy in your yeah, palette and just dip leaves. them in. If you want to go down this, give it the center a little bit darker. Yeah, that's beautiful. And just leave it. And then See you what happens. Can't remember how you did it. <laughs> exactly. You can But do you see how that brown you blended to. in here? I mean, isn't that yeah. beautiful? Yeah. 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 So let's do that again. Just this, a little dot. This one looks like an iris. Yeah, I was like, saying like you could make a flower out of that. So I'll do one more really simple one since you said that. So let's take a, a shape like this. Um, blur your eyes. And you're just doing the shape. So a bunch of C curves again, and then some taps. And then down here. It doesn't take much to make it look so, like a yeah, flower. So really make that brush work for you. Pressure. Yeah. And it's almost like having three brushes in one. Do you like the lack, to start with the larger brush? Yeah. Work with it? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you, you can, can use make it, it look use, really That's mostly what I use. Detail. Mm -hmm. And then... Add in a little bit of dark down here. Pretty. Tiny bit of green. Don't touch everything. That was a little much. I like it. And there you go. <laughs> and that looks like a flower, and that yeah. took me a minute. And that's my favorite one. So then if you want, you can go in and add more, and that's not, I would go back again after that because now it's drying a little strange. Um, you see how how it lightened yeah. as it dried? Mm -hmm. That's that's what I had to really learn. Yeah. Right, and if there's areas. Or does that depend on the paper it's on, whether it sucks yeah. more in or not? A little bit, yeah. If there's areas you don't like, like I don't really like the way that one is moving into this flower. Just add a little water, soak it up. I love your leaves. Practice on those. And then you can go back in and add some darks in here. Mm -hmm. But go practice. Go, go have practice. fun. Go practice. Go practice. Fun.